officer take a seat to my right. Mr. Haina, take a seat to my left. And then if both of you could raise your right hands to be sworn in, please. Do you and each of you do solemnly state that the evidence you shall give in this matter shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth shall help you by this? Great. Take a seat. Um, Your Honor, there is a matter of, uh, I filed a, a notice of, of, of appeal for interlocutory appeal. And I don't know if that stops the proceedings today, or if I may uh, request a, a, a stay uh, 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 upon the determination of this appeal. All right, let's go ahead and get your appearances first. All right, so go ahead and state your name, please, sir. I'll uh, speak with you. Gabriel Amar Maliki Hina. Okay, and uh, so Michelle Hopper. good afternoon to you both. All right, and Mr. Hina, we're here today for your traffic court trial. Um, it looks like, and let me pull up the file. It looks like we were last here on December 19th. And at that time, the court had advised you of your rights and had set um, this matter for trial for today's date and time. And Mr. Hena, you were informing the court that you... Uh, I, I filed a, 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 a notice of appeal and record on appeal uh, requesting for an interlocutory appeal um, on the, um, the denied motion to dismiss. Okay. The denied motion to dismiss the charges? Yeah. Our, uh, so we, I didn't uh, dismiss. On, the, on, it was your, it was your ruling uh, not not to grant the dismissal. All right. So and because those because it's dependent upon um, constitutional and, and statutory rights. That's the reason for the interlocutory appeal. All right. And so we were in court on an arraignment. And so at that point in time, the court had declined to dismiss your case. Um, and so there was no trial um, at the arraignment stage that had taken place, in other words. So um, it, go ahead, sir. I apologize. It was recorded as a or uh, it was recorded as an oral motion. And, and your determination was to not grant that. All right. And, and so that's what we're appealing. All right. And that's fine, sir. However, because you're here today for an actual trial on the merits of the case, um, the court will proceed today with the trial, um, finding that um, finding that the trial affords you the notice and opportunity to be heard regarding the evidence. Um, if, if I may object to that, Your Honor, because of the, the appeal um, has to do with my rights not to be tried and because if we continue with the trial, my, my rights wouldn't be preserved. So I don't have any demur before me, sir, or any other um, document that would um, indicate that you have lodged any sort of um, argument or um, position with respect to the court's ability to proceed today. It, it was um, it was briefed in the trial brief. All right. Did your honor have an opportunity to read? I that? did. I did review that, and there was no um, relief that was being requested of the court in the trial brief, and so the court isn't making any determination about any of the arguments set forth in the trial brief at this time. Uh, it, was, it had to do with the tribal sovereign immunity and not being able to be tried. All right, and the court um, has reviewed that and finds that that does not apply in this case. All okay. right. If if I may present that. Um, I paid my, my dues to the uh, CFR court to be able to um, be a, 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 it's considered a layman advocate. You just have to show basic knowledge of uh, uh, Indian law in order to be a layman advocate. So technically I'm an advocate now and mm -hmm. able to represent the tribe, if I may present that to the court. I don't believe that's necessary, sir. I, I'm not sure what that is, but we're here today for a traffic court trial, so I'm not um, going to be ruling on any sort of tribal court or um, we're here in superior court, and superior court has jurisdiction with respect to today's proceedings 
um, to the extent that you were driving on California roads and highways, um, the vehicle code would apply to you, sir. And so um, the court will take testimony. That's the purpose of today's hearing is to take testimony from um, Officer Hopper, and you're able to provide testimony to the court as well regarding your position as to what occurred. Okay. I, I don't know if the, 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 the court had reviewed the exemplified uh, orders that, that say that we're on the reservation. And are you referring to your trial brief? It, it, no, it was in the notice of lack of jurisdiction and special appearance. Oh. All right. And so, sir, let me the take minute order dated uh, 3 16 2021. And that was um, it specifically says defendant states he's an American Indian within territory. And then if you look below, it says defendant to provide proof of providing services on the reservation. And because we had to stipulate the reservation boundaries. So you need to tell me what you're referring to by page, if you're able to. It looks like the... It, it was an attachment. And it's 82 pages. So if you could assist by um, providing the court with an approximate okay. page number that you're referring to, so I can take a look and follow and follow you. It starts at page 22. Okay, let me. Let me it's there. 22, 23, and 24. Let's take a look. Of the attachments, let me make sure I'm on the right document. Okay, it was a document filed on November 27th? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And then what's, and you said it's 22? All right, let me see. What I have is made my page 22. My page 22 starts, it looks like, what is this? It looks like it's some sort of document from the Calavera Superior Court. I don't think that's what yes, you're referring to. That is what you're referring to? Yes. Okay. It's an exemplified document. So the clerk is certifying the minute order. Okay. The judge certifies the clerk, and then the clerk certifies that the judge is a true judge. And this, uh, this falls under uh, United States Code, um, Title 28, Section 1738, to um, all courts in the United States have to give it full faith and credit um, on the determination of, the, of this court. And um, as I said, it says I was to provide proof of providing services on the reservation. And if you continue on to the next um, document, it's another exemplified court order where it says proof of community service hours has been submitted. So that was accepted. So this looks to be a different proceeding, sir. And so um, the court um finds that this isn't relevant um to this proceeding which is a different proceeding i understand that you're referring to it as as an exemplified document but it bears no um relation to what we're here today for it, it, if i may address that it, the relevance is is that you're on the reservation right now and we were on the reservation during this transaction all right and that's what these orders along with along with the rest of the attachments and uh, um the exemplified settlement, see notice of accord and satisfaction, um, and then the the, the evidence. It, it's a redacted evidence where it shows the agreement. It shows that um, this truck was registered as a, a native vehicle. It was already in this proceeding that was decided on, and that um, I, I, I had showed these to the the officer and. and uh, along with uh, a letter to the DMV, the director of the DMV, um, which is all that is required of me to register the vehicle. All right, sir. And what I'm looking at right now is a copy of the citation. Um, do you have a copy of your citation that was issued by Officer Hopper on October 9th, 2023? 
Yes, ma'am. Okay. And I'm taking a look at the location of the violation, and it looks like it says 2070 Highway 49. Yes, that's so, on the reservation, according to the exemplified uh, contract. All right. Um, so the court finds um, that, in fact, that's a California State Highway um, and not it, a reservation, it, it and so the court is inclined the to reservation, proceed. Ma'am. And the court is inclined to proceed, and we'll take testimony from Officer Hopper, who will identify the location. All right, okay, sir? If I may preserve my objection to that error. All right. Um, your objection is preserved, sir. And then um, I'm taking a look. Let's see. All right. All right. So, again, we're here today to proceed um, with a trial. Um, on whether you violated, and let me get to the citation again. And so um, you were issued a citation by Officer Hopper on October 9th, 2023. Count one is a violation of Vehicle Code Section 4000A1, no evidence of current registration. Count two is a violation of Vehicle Code Section 5204A, current tab improperly attached. Now, both of those violations, sir, the court will advise you um, are able to be corrected if you have a proof of correction, which um, if you have proof of current registration of the subject vehicle, the court could take a look at that. The total fine amount um, for those two violations is $456. The only proof is, that, is what I have attached um, uh, that the, it was the current registration of the, of the vehicle. It's the tribal registration. All right. And motor vehicles in California, sir, have to be registered with the California Department of Motor Vehicles. All right, sir. It's a it's a um, miscellaneous uh, certification for uh, tribal registration that was uh, uh, served to the DMV for that vehicle. OK. And is that attached to any of the documents you um, had provided to the court? Yes, ma'am. It's uh, uh, the November uh, 27th okay. notice of lack of jurisdiction. OK. Um, and then which page, approximately which page is that? Oh my gosh. 20, 20, All right. Is it about 52? I see this. Board 1989. Yeah. Truck, is that? Subject vehicle, it looks like the citation was for an F-250 Ford 1989 vehicle. Yes. All right. So I'm looking at um, page 52 of the November 27th filing that you had referred to. Is it the suspense customer copy for the registration? Yes, I see that. And then after that is the declar or the, um, after that's okay, the transfer let me form. Okay. Two more pages is the miscellaneous certification. Okay. Is that the certification of lien sale? Uh, no. Keep going? Uh, no, keep going. Okay. Uh, it is. No, the cert it's before that. It's before that? Yeah, the page before that is the miscellaneous certification. Let's see. Ah, okay. So it looks like on the November 27th filing, it's page 55 of 82. And go ahead and tell me again what your what the relevance of this is. Oh, this is this this is how you register a native vehicle, and I've done that, and it was accepted in this case and determined that that we were on the reservation. And if I may, that once a tribe's been recognized, it takes an act of Congress to terminate the tribe or its reservation boundaries. And all right, and I'm taking a look at that document again. It's the miscellaneous certification, as you asserted. I see that it looks like Section C, um, the Indian owned vehicles. Yes, ma'am. And I'm reading Indian owned vehicles driven on public highways are exempt from license fees only. Tribal owned vehicles used exclusively within the boundaries of their tribe are exempt from weight and license fees. Looks like you've indicated you're a member of a tribe yes. living on the reservation and the vehicle will be registered. Yes. Right. I've turned all this in and I've been waiting for my, my sticker for I don't know how long all right. since this document has been turned in. And sir, with respect to this. Because I've done my due diligence and doing what I, what's necessary of me 
that the balls the balls in the state court all right and again the state and again this refers to vehicles driven um, within the boundaries of tribal land yes um, again taking a look at the citation and with your testimony from officer hopper um, you were on uh, California State Highway all right highway 49 and so that's within the jurisdiction of the state of California all right and not within the tribe not within the tribal land all right sir so does this court have appellate jurisdiction over those court orders as well is that what I'm so there's nothing on appeal before this court what we're here today okay. for is a traffic court trial on those two counts so that i mentioned to you so are you not giving notice to those exemplified orders that say this is the reservation so the court has looked at those documents and finds that um and again we'll hear testimony from officer hopper but on its face what i'm looking at on the citation is it appears that you are driving on Highway 49, which is a California state highway, not within the tribal court jurisdiction or tribal land jurisdiction. So we're here to um, proceed with a traffic court trial. And sir, I'll just lay out the format of how it will go. Both of you have been sworn. Um, the people have the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt as to both of the counts. Officer Hopper will testify first. You'll have an opportunity to cross-examine her when she's done. It's fine if you don't have any questions. Then I'll turn it over to you. You're able to provide testimony to the court um, as to what happened. Um, and then uh, to the extent that there's anything new or different that you've raised within your testimony, I'll give Officer Hopper a brief chance at something called rebuttal, which is just to address the new arguments or facts that you may have raised that she didn't present in her um, in her opening presentation to the court. And the purpose of that is because uh, the people have the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt as to those two counts. Okay. So I'll give them um, the last word. Okay. After um, the testimony is complete, I'll go ahead and rule on the case. Uh, you do have 30 days in which to file a notice of appeal. And it looks like you know how to do that, sir, given that you have um, been able to pull up some of the appellate forms. Okay. Um, but um, if you need more forms, they're available in the clerk's office. And you can go ahead and fill those out, um, Just depending on what today's uh, result is all right okay. uh, just w one real quick issue i don't know if the court noticed uh that i gave notice that there's related cases on the on the trial brief and at the end of the trial brief and that these all the evidence was to be incorporated into this case all right let's take a look <laughs> all right so i'm taking a look at the trial brief um filed on january 2nd and then <laughs> That, that, so the the first case is uh, 21 TR 116188, okay. and that was an acquittal. All right. uh, w that was, was from uh, the uh, Jackson um, Police Department, along with uh, uh, a, an appeal number 21 AP. Is and what are you referring to? Can you give me a page number, sir, so I can follow along with you? Oh, it's the cover page. Ah. Uh, and it's also on the signature page, which is um, page 16, where it says all evidence is, is incorporated with, with this case. Okay, I'm looking at, by cover page, do you mean page one? Uh, yes, ma'am. Okay. Ah, okay. All right. So uh, we, uh, we had an acquittal in the last uh, case that uh, was bef before the court and um, uh, this this argument is a uh, uh, claim precluded and, and it's it's barred because they did they didn't raise this on that prior and on on the prior click case All right. which involved uh, a, a, um, a, another tribal vehicle and they didn't they didn't bring up that issue of not being um, registered. All right. And so to the extent that you've cited those, um, this is a different citation with a different traffic uh, case number that the court has issued. The court is not bound by any other prior traffic matters where you may have been acquitted or any that have uh, previously been pending or were before this court. All right. So this is the first time that the court is hearing um, any facts as it relates to this citation that was issued by Officer Hopper. Okay. All right. Um, it is also collateral estoppel um, because of the um, the prior agreement with the California Attorney General, which is uh, who was the attorney on um, the second.
because there's actually two cases, two Calaveras cases, and the attorney general was the attorney on the on the second case where we had the dispute resolution agreement. All right. And so as it relates to the attorney general or any Calaveras County case that has no bearing on this court in this particular case, as it relates to this new traffic matter regarding the citation that was issued on October 9th, 2023. All right, sir. I appreciate you. All right. Are you prepared to proceed today? Yes, ma'am. All right. Let's go ahead. Officer Hopper, I'll hear from you first. I just want to make sure that I'm not waiving any any of my arguments on my rights by proceeding. So the court has noted your opposition to the proceedings taking place. The court has engaged in a dialogue with you regarding some of the concerns you've raised. If you wish to appeal again, you have 30 days to appeal while Officer Hopper is testifying or during your testimony, you're able to lodge objections to preserve those arguments. And the court will afford you the opportunity to present your case and arguments. All right. I appreciate it. All right. Officer Hopper, are you prepared to proceed? Yes, ma'am. Okay. And go ahead. I'm going to have you speak a little bit loudly into the microphone. It looks like you may have a quiet voice just so that I get everything you're saying. Okay. So on October 9th, 2023, at approximately 1500 hours, I was on patrol for the city of Jackson in full police uniform, driving a fully marked patrol vehicle. I was sitting in the Italian Wills parking lot facing west, watching vehicles past. I believe that's where it changes from North Main Street to Jackson Gate. I observed a gray and white Ford pickup drive past me. I recognize the vehicle as when I had placed a yellow warning tab on. Objection, speculation. Overruled. Continue. I had placed a yellow warning tab on that vehicle a few days prior because it was sitting in front of a residence without current registration. So I proceeded to follow that vehicle down Jackson Gate. When we approached the intersection of Jackson Gate and 88, the vehicle made a left hand turn onto 88 and then veered to the right at 49. I continue to follow the vehicle. It made a left turn into the Amador Plaza Shopping Center where Save Mart is at the first entrance. I proceeded and made a left hand turn into the same shopping center at the second entrance. The vehicle approached me coming toward the kind of T-bowing to or coming to the side of my vehicle. He went in front of me, proceeded to head west into the parking lot toward the front of the stores. I followed him. I activated my fourth red light and proceeded to do a traffic traffic stop. I pulled behind his vehicle, approached his vehicle, identified who I was, and he was very upset. I called for assistance. I asked Sergeant Del Rio to come to my location to assist me. We engaged with Mr. I'm sorry, I don't know how to say it. Hannah. And I explained to him that his registration, he still had not put a sticker, registered his vehicle. There was no sticker, year sticker on the back of his license plate. He showed me several documentations saying that he did not have to have it. In those documentations, I didn't see anything that indicated he did not have to have a registration on his vehicle. I proceeded to write him a citation for the driving without current registration. And then the second citation, the 5204A, is not having that particular sticker on or any sticker on his vehicle. All right. Is that it, Officer Hopper? May I cross-examine? Yes, and I just want to make sure she's done and then I'll hand it over to you. I'm sorry, I forgot something. That's fine. All right. And Mr. Hihena, go ahead and it's your opportunity to cross-examine Officer Hopper. Okay. When you activated your lights, was that when you first pulled into the second driveway? No, I activated them after you passed in front of me and I got behind your vehicle. Are you sure? You didn't tell me to pull over? You didn't activate them? Are you sure? I did tell you to pull over as you were pulling into me because I thought you were going to hit my vehicle as you went around it. I told you to pull over. I believe that's when I activated my lights. It could have been prior. Was there a vehicle following me? Yes, there was. Okay. So you didn't have a clear, unobstructed view of my license plate prior to initiating the stop? As you passed Telling Wills, I was facing west. You were heading north. I had an unobstructed view of your license plate as you went past my vehicle. Where was that? I was in the parking lot at Telling Wills. 
Because what I remember is that... Um, and sir, I'm, you have I'm an sorry, opportunity to provide testimony. Okay. So this um, is your opportunity to question Officer Hopper any of the testimony she provided. Traveling, um, what would that be, southbound on North Main Street while as I was driving northbound on North Main Street. And that's um, when you saw my vehicle. I was in the tail, I was in the parking lot at Telling Us. Okay. As far as I can recall, I was in the parking lot at Telling Us. Okay. Um, uh, uh, oh, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay, what, take what, your time, sir. What restaurant was that? Te telling Wills Park. It's right there where Main North Main oh, Street telling Wills. and Jackson Gate where the road changes. Are you sure that's just not where you turned around? to come follow my vehicle. Like I said, as far as I can recall, I was at the parking lot at Tony Wells. Okay, where, 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 were you, where were you parked over there? I would be on the south end entrance. The north end entrance has a bump, so I always sit at the south end entrance. Exit. Are you just sitting there at the entrance? Typically, okay. Facing the road or parked in a parking spot? Facing the road. Okay. And then uh, uh, you say that there was a vehicle uh, following me, correct? Yes, it followed you as you turned into the parking lot. It was behind you the entire time I was following, but okay. even that, I believe it was a blue truck as well. Um, no. Um, there was a vehicle that, behind you. Did that vehicle also not have registration? It had a sticker, but it was also expired. And you went around that vehicle in order to pull me over? No, I did not. Both vehicles turned left into the parking lot. In the first entrance, I pulled into the second entrance. Your vehicle is the one that approached mine. You didn't initiate a stop on that vehicle, did you? As you were behind it? No, I was not prepared to initiate the stop yet. I, I had not begun You had to... a vehicle in front of you that had no registration, but you did not initiate a stop. I, I was not prepared to initiate the stop when you both made the left-hand turn into the parking lot. I had not given dispatch any information of where I was and what I was doing. Or you just focused on pulling my vehicle over? No, sir, I would have pulled either vehicle over. I, like I said, there's information I have to give dispatch before I initiate a stop for my safety, and I had not entered that information yet. Okay. The, the notice that asked me to move my vehicle, um, you, you, you gave this to me. You get you put it on the vehicle. Yes. You're asking me to move the vehicle. Yes. Did I do anything wrong by moving the vehicle? So I believe you spoke with Sergeant Del Rio the day I put that on your vehicle, and he explained to you that the vehicle needed to be registered or moved to private property. I explained to you on the day that I wrote the citation, you needed to go to DMV to get a one-day moving ticket or pass to move this that vehicle on the highway without current registration. Uh, this is not a moving pass where you're asking me to move the vehicle. No, it is not. Okay. That's a warning. That's just a okay. warning. When you, when you requested Del Rio, were, was I the one that requested Del Rio or were you the one that requested? You, you asked me if I knew Sergeant Del Rio and I said yes and I had already requested, requested he, that he come to my location before you said okay. Del Rio come. And that was to discuss the, the whole tribal that was from, I called him before you said that for my safety because of the way that you reacted to my traffic. It was uncomfortable for you. It was not a safe situation for me. It made it unsafe. The way that you were yelling and that you had your door open, it's not safe for- Well, I had to, I, I did have to speak. I, I apologize, it's supposed to be questions. I apologize for interrupting, go ahead. So it was not a safe, I felt it was not a safe situation for me to be there alone as an officer because of the way that you reacted to my approach to you. The way, let me back up. When you first pulled into the stall, you tried to back into my vehicle. That was my first indication that it was not going to be a safe traffic stop. When you finally stopped your vehicle as I asked you to and I approached you, you were screaming at me. That is when I asked Sergeant Del Rio to come to my location for officer safety. Would you describe it as screaming or just talking loudly? Very upset. Uh, so indication to make sure, you would, to make sure you would hear. Would it be screaming or do talking loudly loudly to make sure that you would hear? It was to by your interpretation. My interpretation. It was you were very upset and screaming.
Okay, why, for what reason do you disregard the, uh, the registration that I presented? The papers that you showed me did not give me a clear indication that you were exempt from having registration on your vehicle. And as I explained to you, if I was incorrect on that assumption, on what I saw, that I would told you you had you, you could come to court as we are today. Do you have any Do you have any reason to believe that um, besides the, the the court ruling, did you did you have any reason to believe that those exemplified documents that showed that we're on the reservation are not in order? So as Sergeant Delray and I explained to you, you were on Highway 49, which as far as we um, understand, it is not part of the reservation. Uh, uh, Non-responsive. May, may, may I have your assistance in having her answer the question? Um, do you believe, do you have any belief that those orders that say that we're on the reservation to not be in order so as I said, I didn't see anything on those papers that indicated to me that we were on the reservation. You, you, were, you received the notice of lack of jurisdiction, correct? The emails that you sent? Uh, yes. Yes, I have. And did you review those? I looked at them briefly, yes. And then are you referring to the trial brief that you filed, sir? Uh, no, the notice of lack of jurisdiction in special Okay, appearance. the November 27th filing. Um, did you receive the trial brief? Possibly, I've received several emails from you. Um, do you see anything wrong with, um, did, you, did you file any objections to those documents? So you have no argument to them? They were irrelevant to my citation. But you, that's, it's not my decision. Did you file an, an objection or argument to them? It's not my decision. It's irrelevant. It is up to the court. Okay. So you didn't file the... And that's been asked and answered, sir. So move on. Oh, okay. I apologize. That's all right. Um, Do you have any case law or st statute that would overturn um, anything presented in the argument on the um, trial brief that clarified how these documents that were in the notice of lack of jurisdiction and special appearance function within the United States Code and the rules applying to them? So once again, that, that wouldn't be my decision. That would be up to the court. What makes it, what makes it not your decision? I, I wrote the citation. The citation is what I saw at the moment. The citation is what I gave when I saw the law not being followed. As far as whether the information you provided to me, it's not relevant of what I wrote. Okay, so at, that, at that time, my citation is at that time, at that moment, not what you presented after. At that time, at that moment, I did not have any indication that you did not have to register your vehicle, hence why I wrote the citation. Anything after the fact is up to the judge. And then, sir, I'll have you move on. I want to focus on the events of the date in question and not any subsequent arguments and filings that you may have made. That's not relevant as it relates to the testimony being elicited. Okay. Okay. Based off of all the documents that I showed you and the fact that you gave me this um, this permit, basically permit to move my vehicle, um, would you think that I have um, the malice to or... Um, the malice that would make you think that that I thought, now this is a little bit of speculation, but 
do you believe that I thought that I was breaking the law? And, and sir, that ultimate determination will be for the court to decide. Um, and so go ahead and move on. So I just want you to focus on what Officer Hopper testified to you about the events of that date when you were issued the citation, all right? Okay. Um, did you accept the tribe's insurance? I believe after watching the body cam video, you said you did not have insurance on the vehicle. And Sergeant Del Rio said that you needed to get insurance if you're going to drive it out on the state highway. Uh, and that's not before the court. So the only two counts before the court are um, not having your vehicle registered and failing to improperly attach tabs or failing to attach tabs to the vehicle. So the court has no, um, that's not a consideration before the court, any insurance. There, there's no offenses related to that. Um, Do you have any other? I, I don't believe I have any other questions. All right, sir. And now it's your opportunity to provide the court with any testimony um, that you would like to regarding um, the citation that was issued to you. Okay. Um, I was asked to move my vehicle, and I did as I was asked to do. Um, I am a federally recognized American Indian. We are on the reservation um, by these court orders. Um, they are administrative in nature, and I don't believe that there's any discretion involved. Um, The vehicle was parked. Uh, if you look on on the um, on the notice, it, the location is 705 North Main Street. That is uh, uh, um, my father-in-law's house, so it was parked in front of a, a residence. Um, it has been a custom and usage for us to park our vehicles there for uh, at least um, since I I. I purchased the vehicle from him. And then, um, I believe that I am following the law. I'm doing what is required of me. Um, and that I have uh, applied for um, the layman advocate in the, uh, the Court of Indian Offenses and the Bureau of Indian Affairs, which gives me the, um, the ability to, to practice in that court. And, and I am, a, a, a would be a layman lawyer in order to represent the tribe. And, um, the tribe has immunity from the civil regulatory suit on its reservation. And only an act of Congress can uh, uh, change that. Pursuant to the, the, as described in the trial brief. Anything further? And again, this is collateral estoppel and barred from action because of our prior agreement with the California Attorney General, as was provided to the court. 
No, ma'am. And then again, as I said at the outset, because the people have the burden of proof beyond a reasonable doubt um, as to both the offenses, I'll let Officer Hopper address um, any facts that um, Mr. Hayan, the defendant, brought up during his testimony that um, may not have been addressed during um, the, the initial testimony that you provided. So, Officer Hopper, do you have anything further um, to add um, to the testimony based on Mr. Hayan's um Testimony. No, no, Your Honor. Okay. All right. So, hearing um, the evidence from both parties, um, the court finds the um, defendant guilty beyond a reasonable doubt of both counts one and two. So, um, again, uh, Mr. Hena, um, you have no doubt in your mind. There's no doubt fluttering in your mind whatsoever. So the court has ruled on the matter, sir. And so again, you have 30 days to appeal um, the court's ruling um, by filing a notice of appeal. And um, because it's a traffic infraction case, the sentence is a monetary fine. And again, um, the total fine amount is $456. Um, if you have um, difficulty with the ability to pay that fine amount, um, there's an opportunity for you to file an ability to pay um, petition that's in paper. Um, there's also um, a way to do that online if um, the amount of the fine is a hardship. If you go to our Amador um, court website, there's on the home page financial hardships and it will direct you to i believe it's a my citations link that's with yeah, the state I, of california I, I think i've seen and then go through and answer the prompts of the questions you'll have to provide information about income and things like that and whether you're on any sort of aid okay. um so once you go ahead and complete that it will come to the court to look at regarding the county just paid our registration for that LV that she didn't pull over <laughs> All right. So, and so that's not before the court, sir. So with respect to this particular offense involving this particular vehicle on October 9, 2023, that will be um, the court's ruling. So the fine, will you need more time to pay that? Um, the fine is due within 30 days, however. Yeah, I won't be able to pay it whatsoever. Okay. So go ahead and, again, submit an ability to pay. Um Petition, providing the information either in paper or online uh, to be able to see if you can get any sort of reduction in that fine amount. All right. Um, so the fine will be payable uh, right now within 30 days. And so the court would suggest that you go online and either um, submit the online petition or the paper petition so that it gets to the court regarding uh, regarding that. All right. So the court will impose uh, the fine again of four hundred and fifty. So I would say I'll get an oral motion on that today. It's not done on oral motion. So you need to provide documentation information about your income. So feel free to do that later today. Submit it to the court again in person uh, via paper or online. So the court um, will get that and see if there's any ability to reduce that. There's no guarantee, but I advise um, defendants of that option uh, if it poses a hardship. All right. And additionally, Mr. Hena, um, these proceedings have been orally recorded. So to the extent that you wish to file a notice of appeal, you have the right to request and receive a recording of today's proceedings. All right, sir. Okay. I appreciate it. All right. If Thank I may just give my one final, final objection that is so again, the objections have been heard. The time has elapsed for that to be lodged. Okay. Again, your recourse at this point in time is to file a notice of appeal, all right, within I, 30 I, days, I as just, you've advised. I just want to make sure the court knows I'm not waiving any of my rights. So again, the time has elapsed for that. The court Thank has you. made its ruling, and your recourse is filing a notice of appeal, sir. Yeah. All right? Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. You have a good day, Your Honor. I appreciate it. Thank you. You too, sir. Good afternoon, officer. Thank you.